So thanks very much, uh, Janusz Potocznik. I now give the floor uh, to Fergus Adult, the Irish <coughs> Minister for the Environment, the presidency at the moment in uh, Europe. We know how to change the agenda for the presidency is always, and we need your leadership, and we are very happy to let you pledge it also to the mayor in Asia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman, uh, distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor for me to be here today uh, to listen to the debate and to uh, bring a message from our, our government to you as representing the Irish presidency. Um, I was just reflecting on the speakers there and I was thinking back when I was young, it was a little while ago I suppose, but the last thing you did at night uh, when I was a young person was you washed the milk bottles, you put them out for the morning when they were recycling, the milk came and he took the bottles and there was no plastic waste there. And when we were children, um, you, if you wanted to buy a can of Coke or whatever, there was no Coke in the can at that time, it was in the bottle. So you paid, you went into your shop, you bought your, uh, you bought what you wanted, you paid the deposit, and you came back later on when you had finished to get your next bottle of Coca-Cola or whatever it was, and, and, and you got your money back. And uh, I had a very enterprising brother who turned out to be an engineer later on, who went to the local shop and he used to do that, but he went round the back afterwards and took all the bottles as they came out and went back in. I got more money. Uh, but that was true recycling. Uh, so I had work for him. Uh, so, uh, so I think that there's a lot of things we did in the past that we can learn for, and not just things that are going to happen in the future. And can I just say here, coming from Ireland, that I recognise Karen Dovsky, who's here, who may be known to some of you. And, and the reason I recognise her is because her activity and campaigning in our community, and I think, I think what's very important in bringing about change, is community groups are listened to more often than politicians are nowadays. And they can really put the focus on the issue and, and get action. And Karen has done that in the past, particularly in relation to Coast Watch Ireland. And I suppose one of the biggest changes we made in our country was in 2002, when a former Minister for the Environment, Minister Dempsey, decided, and he had the courage at that time, to bring in, I know you heard this perhaps yesterday, a plastic bag tax. What that meant was that, uh, you know, the autumn landscape of our country changed overnight, that whereas previously when the leaves uh, disappeared off our lovely green trees, uh, and you were left with a landscape of, of plastic everywhere, green, yellow, blue, whatever it was, that actually disappeared very, very quickly. And whereas before the plastic bag tax came in, uh, something like 40% of people said, well, they definitely were going to pay it, or it wasn't going to work. It, it worked overnight, and as you know, the statistics are remarkable, that in Ireland, where in 2002, uh, the average plastic bag per head of the population was something like 328. It has been reduced now in the last survey to something like uh, 32 plastic bags per person. And that change came about very, very quickly. The public bought into it. It transformed the way we thought about waste. And there are also other messages there that transferred into other environmental improvements and changes. And people became much more aware of littering. They came much more and bought much more into all of the other uh, environmental issues uh, that, 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 that grew from that. The other point I'd like to make is that um, I used to be a teacher years ago and I always found that uh, young people in particular would tell you where you were going wrong. And I think, uh, we all thought that still. Um, I think the key point is that if young people get the message, things will change. I know on a very serious health issue, uh, the campaign against smoking for instance, you know, mummies and daddies are a daughter, you've got to put out that fact. You know, it's, it's going to do harm. And environmental issues, if young people get the message, if in our schools, uh, you know, it, it, that is a part of our curriculum. And I feel, it, you know, it crosses everything. Every child has to go to school, every child has to learn their language and their maths and so on. But if at the core of their curriculum are environmental issues, are environmental courses, are messages about literacy and about water and about all of these other issues, I think that that will also lead to sustained and, 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 and important changes. And, and I feel... <laughs> I, 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 I honestly think that's, that's where it's at. And I suppose if I could say this here, and it's not seen to be a political point I'm making, but if, if we want to bring about change, if we really want to address marine litter, maybe it's a time for, you know, for, for, for the, you know, the companies and the commercial bodies uh, to get together and that they would sponsor, because quite often sponsorship 
from a major company can, when, when, when governments don't have as much money as they used to have, but if you really have a sustained campaign on a specific issue like marine litter, you know, and get the messages across, and get the companies pro bono to get involved in it, I think you will get change, I think you will get buy-in. And I think if we have a slogan and it's just one like, you know, you know bring it home mum and dad, don't leave the litter on the beach, you know, just whatever simple message you can get out there and it will transform and change opinion. So I believe that this conference is very successful. I've spoken to a number of people here and I've been very impressed with what you're saying. I know Tom Dyle there has given a very good uh, uh, analysis of what has happened in Ireland in relation to, in relation to changes we want to make. And the next steps that have to be taken here uh, the, to address this problem, the other steps, they will most likely include a mix of national measures, regional or sub-regional measures and EU-wide initiatives. As a starting point, the Marine Strategy Framework Directive already requires EU member states to establish targets and indicators and by 2014 to put in place monitoring programmes to quantify trends in the amount of litter in the marine and coastal environment with the aim of reducing inputs and guiding progress towards achieving good environmental status. Recognising that marine litter does not respect national boundaries or jurisdictions, efforts towards good environmental status for marine litter can only be strengthened through coordinated action at regional level, as you've already discussed. So I very much welcome the actions underway by regional seas convention, conventions relating to marine litter presented earlier during, during this conference. Ireland is a contracting party to the OSPAR Convention, and at Bergen in 2020, 2010, OSPAR ministers committed to strengthen our efforts to combat adverse impacts on the marine environment originating from human activities including those resulting from the introduction of marine litter. So we have agreed, as part of the North East strategy, to establish regionally coordinated targets and monitoring programmes for marine litter. I believe that OSPAR contracting parties, and also contracting parties to other regional sea conventions, have much to gain and will bring added value to their efforts by working collectively together. A key priority for our Irish Presidency in the field of the environment is to achieve a first reading with the European Parliament on the seventh Environmental Action Programme. This programme sets out a framework to support the achievement of nine priority objectives through better implementation of EU environmental law, state-of-the-art science, securing the necessary investment in support of environmental and climate change policy, and improving the way that environment concerns and requirements are reflected. The current text of the programme includes the proposal to establish an EU-wide quantitative reduction target for marine litter. Now, there are different views among, among member states regarding the practicalities of setting EU-wide uh, reductions. Concerns have been expressed regarding the availability of a sufficiently comprehensive baseline and the current availability of fit-for-purpose monitoring programmes to detect trends and measures uh, that can be complied with. There are, of course, sound reasons that favour setting an EU-wide target, most notably uh, the clear policy direction that it will provide. It is, however, not the role of the Irish Presidency to decide this matter. Discussions are currently taking place between Member States at environmental working party level. Later in the negotiations, uh, the Irish Presidency will be engaging with Parliament and the Commission, and negotiation will culminate in a number of trialogues in the latter part of our Presidency and we work very hard to, to deliver an agreed position on this matter and we remain absolutely confident that a first reading uh, on the 70 AP can be achieved by the Irish Presidency. So finally I'd like to thank you for listening to me and I know, I know the messages I'm bringing home to my colleagues and the last point I'll make, if I may, I received a phone call from a national journalist there before I came here and he says, hey, I see, you know the way when ministers go there, to where they're going, it's circulated, I see you're going to this conference on marine litter, well, tell me what it's all about. So, you know, there is a real interest in, in what you're doing. The fact that politicians are here along with NGOs and officials and administrators is important and the only way we bring about change is by agreeing the baseline work on simple, clear messages that we can all get through, and we will achieve a much better and much healthier environment into the future. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Fergus, for sharing 
your specific experiences with recycling and, and also for your enthusiasm to come up with very clear and understandable messages on, on this uh, very issue. Now we